the stand itself is just two by fours, like I said. Uh, I cut these to be 18 inches wide. This one's 18 inches long. This one's 18 inches long. This one's 18 inches long. These are cut square just because it's symmetric. And so that's three and a half inches on a side because a two by four, oddly enough, is not really four inches wide. It's only three and a half inches wide. Uh, and you, you draw, you, what you'll need is uh, uh, a drill and a hacksaw as a minimum tool set. So here's my drill. And to put these deck screws through it to hold everything together, I draw. I first drill a pilot hole through. Otherwise, it's just too hard to drive the the uh, drywall screw into uh, the wood. So I, I drill the pilot hole. I place it uh, in the correct plate, place so that the spacing is uh, is correct for the uh, the uh, rails that you just built into your box. So this, this is a box of uh, drywall screws because it never hurts to have too many. Those are the kick in the box. And as I recall, I think our spacing was 12 and a half inches, correct? On center for each of the posts. Right. Yes. Okay. So I pre-drilled these big holes that are going to hold the, uh, the steel conduit. And the way I drilled those is using the... Uh, An auger bit. So that takes a little bit of effort to do. Uh, I drilled all the way through the little square pieces just at a straight angle. And the size drill bit I used is actually 11 16 And that is very, very close to the spacing, uh, to the uh, diameter of the steel conduit. The steel conduit is called a half inch because its interior is a half an inch, but because of the thickness of the steel, it's a little bit wider than that. So 11 sixteenths worked out to be real, real tight fit, and you can just jam it in the hole, hit it with a hammer a couple times, and then it's real solid. Uh, the steel conduit is sold at Home Depot in five foot lengths. Normally it's sold in 10 foot lengths, but they have some conveniently cut, because most people can't put 10 feet of anything in their car. So they have some that are all pre-cut, so you can just get these five foot lengths. The two that go in the front of the stand cut four inches off that five foot. So what does that leave us with? Uh, 56 inches long um, for, the, uh, for the stand in front. And that way, the back stick piece is perfect at five feet. So you don't have to cut that one. And now you did something different with this piece here in the back. Yes, I'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So how do you cut steel conduit? Use a hacksaw. This is the only other tool that's absolutely required uh, is the drill with the appropriate drill bits and a hacksaw, and then you can make this project. Can you get the to do it or not? Um, I don't think they'll cut the steel for you, but I've never asked. They don't have a big machine to do it. You pretty much got to just saw with a, with a hacksaw, uh, unless you got a bandsaw or something at home, but uh, most people probably don't. So the piece in the back that is the back brace, all I did is I took the five foot length, I put one end into the vise and cranked it down. Basically flat flattened it, up. it. And then I bent it at a very slight angle. Um, if you don't have a vise, what you can do is just hammer it flat with a hammer on your curve out in front of the house. But vise is the uh, easy way to do it. Um, the other tricky thing was this back hole in the back two by four has to be drilled at the same angle that the, uh, the steel is going to go into it. So all I did is I, I just held it temporarily in place so I could see what the angle is. Then I took, took uh, my drill and it makes it a lot easier if you pre-drill a hole in the right angle and that will act as a guide for your drill bit which has got the pointy thing in the middle of it of the auger bit so once you've pre-drilled the hole then all i did is i put my auger bit in my my trusty drill and i kind of line the drill up it's mostly going to follow that pilot hole that you drilled but you can you can judge the angle 
as you're drilling the hole and just pretty much match it and close will count. So once I, I did that, then I, I mount, I take the, uh, the steel and I put it into the holes it goes into, tap it down with a hammer. And that'll seat it all the way in the bottom of the holes. You want these to be as close to the same height as possible. So what I did is I didn't drill the bottom two by four. I drilled out completely the top square so that the hole depth is the same on both sides. In the back, you can, it doesn't matter that much because the cross piece is wide enough so that you have some fudge distance. The other piece you have to cut, which I've lost. No, it's there. You had oh. it the first time. Yeah, this one is 16 inches long. And what I've done is I've I drilled uh, the same 11 16 size holes. I bored them down to about an inch depth. You want to make these about as close as you can to about the same depth too. And then this piece goes on top and connects the two uh, sliders. But before you actually put this on and hammer it down, you need to have your box dummy already ready to go. So I don't want to take that one. I'll use this one. So here was my very first prototype that uh, did not have the rails embedded on it. it just had styrofoam inside and I put it on top. Slide it down. I use these spring clamps as the height adjustment. So once that's on, then I can put my cross brace on top. Hammer that down so it's nice and tight. Then I take my drill with a driver bit in it. It simplifies life greatly. You'd never get these in with a screwdriver. And I, I had to pre-drill a hole in the steel. And I've cleverly turned this around. So all I'm gonna do is shoot a screw into it. And now it's together. Now, it's not very heavy. The whole thing constructed weighs maybe 10 pounds. So you can, you can pick this up, move it around. So it's not like a, a regular dummy, possibly, where it's pretty much you're not gonna lift it by yourself and it's always gonna be in the way. So with this construction being as light as it is, it's easy to knock over. And so the way you prevent that from happening is by adding some weight to the, to the base. Now I had a bunch of weights, three weights left over from when my son was in the high school playing football. So what I've just done is stack up 10, uh, 20 pounds of weight on the base of the stand. And now it's real solid. It's not really going to go anywhere. For real, isn't it? I recommend you take an old mask, of which we have a pretty good supply here, and print out a picture of Eric, Coach Eric, <laughs> put it right there. And then you've got your dummy. Now, Eric, of course, needs to have his own weaponry. So what I did for a practice weapon is I just took some odds in it and I put together uh, just uh, something that the dummy could have uh, to defend himself with. And this odd thing is a foil blade with an F.A. bell guard and a French grip. So I've used French grip weapons and one inch pipes because the French grip will fit into the one inch pipe. And there's plenty of those around too. And then it can just go right into the PVC coupler. And it looks like you've what, used a little bit of uh, bungee cord here to kind of- Oh yeah, place. so this is a tarp tie that you can also get at Harbor Freight. Or Home Depot, they're a little cheaper at Harbor Freight. And all I did is I drilled a hole through the PVC pipe, I threaded the bungee part through it, and then if you want to change weapons, it's very simple. You can put another one in. Give me that for you. There you go. Hey, so for those of you at home, there is a use for your French grip. Yes. There you go. 
if you don't have a French grip, you can take your grip off and just use the, the tang without a grip, right? Or you could put a PVC, piece of PVC on it. Okay. Yeah, so that there's something to tighten it down to, otherwise the whole thing just breaks. So that's pretty much all there is to putting the dummy together, and it's pretty stable. I so this one pretty good. So Sean, you said uh, what happens if you don't have leftover uh, barbell weights? What oh, are some other ways you. you can so, weigh it down? My, my other dummy over there has got uh, a square dumbbell on it. And if you have one of those, that's perfect because they don't roll off. They sit, it's nice and stable. I use another tarp tie just to hold it in place. Uh, that's the pervert, preferred solution. Uh, over here are my second prototype. I had uh, some uh, free weights left over, and so I just stacked those up on a screw to hold them in place. Um, but if you don't have any of that, rather than go out and buy weights, uh, one idea I had is uh, the, the drinking water that comes in the larger jug container, it's two and a half gallons, it's got the handle in the middle, that'll weigh about 20 pounds. You can just get one of those, or if you have some of those, drink the water, then fill it up with tap water, and then just put that on the stand and bungee it around this uh, center piece of two by four, and uh, that'll hold it nice and, nice and secure. Uh, 20 pounds is pretty uh, solid. So there you have it. And, and then like do a beat attack or something like that. Right now, of course, if you guys are practicing at home and you've got an armed uh, practice dummy, make sure you're wearing your mask while you're doing it. But this is great. It looks like it's very secure, very durable. And uh, for the price tag of about $55. One other thing. Oh, yes. Um, if uh, you're, you've got a slippery floor, uh, you might want to get some of this, which I included in that $55. Uh, they sell this at Harbor Freight, and it's just this rubber matting stuff, and uh, I hot glued it to the, uh, the bottom of the stand. Oh, okay. So that way then, it's if you're on a wooden floor, or you're on a tile floor or something, it's not going to slide around. Okay. Good to know. Let's see. It looks like Nolan had a question here in chat. He said, I understand the need for the weights. But is there a chance to use it without weights? What happens without it? Uh, it'll probably fall right over. Uh, it's braced pretty good going backwards. Without the weight, it will rock back forward and probably fall over because the weight is the arm and weapon. <coughs> probably pull it to the front. All right. Did that answer your question, Nolan? Yeah, so just, just you know, you've got a, a water jug or something like that. You can put that down there. You don't need um, weights. Yeah. Yep. You know, like a heavy pull blanket or something you probably hold in place. I've got a used server to be perfect. Lays it fun. Yeah, you might have some, uh, you know, the, the idea with this, this project, you guys might have some scrap lumber lying around. You may have some of these pieces uh, already available. And, of course, this is just an idea. Um, so if it's a case where you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, mitigate uh, going out or getting some of these different things, you might be able to find a lot of this stuff lying around uh, the garage um, or, you know, somewhere in the uh, various and sundry supplies that have kind of stacked up. Most people have got a bunch of stuff that uh, they might be able to use. So, in fact, our very own Oscar here is made out of nothing but a bunch of scrap lumber, <laughs> bits and pieces of stuff uh, over the years. Um, but if you were to price out just the lumber for Oscar, it's about $120 if you're going to buy that. So we were trying to find a, uh, a, a solution for you that gave you the options of having a target at home, um, but without having to spend a lot on it. Uh, any other questions? Oh, yes. So Sean's got, how do we cut PVC? Well, there's two ways to do it. If you got one of these, 
these uh, little uh, ratchet cutters are really good, and they have cut right through it. If you don't have one, just use a hacksaw. Hacksaw makes a nice cut into uh, the PVC. All right. Anything else? Any other suggestions, Sean? Um, oh, so I made this checkerboard pattern here. Uh, the one on uh, this one over here is just a square of this tire tread stuff that I painted a grid on so that I could actually aim at a smaller target than a 12 inch. Hopefully everybody can hit 12 inches by 12 inches. Uh, so I thought I'd narrow that down. And then uh, if Corey and Hike want to come up with clever drills, you can number these different targets and then you can be giving commands over the video chat yeah, to, uh, to, to advance retreat, lunge three. Right, right, you know, right. That sort of thing. All right. Uh, anyway, I think, think I covered pretty much everything. Uh, if you don't want to get this stuff, you can use anything you got laying around. An old uh, welcome mat you can cut up or a uh, table place setting or a uh, cover of a notebook that uh, you don't want to be the cover of a notebook anymore and just pop glue it under the front of the box. Anything to keep from puncturing the, the cardboard. Although if you fill it with this foam stuff, it's going to be all plasticized on the inside. I think it's pretty durable, but I would want something to have a little bit of cushion uh, anyway, or uh, you know, a piece of carpeting, or uh, gosh, I don't know. Okay, 